Hello, this is David McCain, and I'm here with my father, Len McCain, and his travel partner, Nina Schlo. And they're going to be talking a little bit about what's changed in their lives. They've been around for a significant amount of time, and they have seen monumental change. So our theme is monumental change. What I'd like to do is start off with Len, and what I'd like you to do, Len, is just share your age, when you were born, and where you grew up. Go ahead. Well, I was born in 1928. That was about a few years before the Depression. And I was born in Long, Longmont, Colorado, and grew up in, uh, in the Lions uh, uh, experience. Uh, and how Lions, old? Colorado. How old are you, sir? Oh, that make me 84. Okay. That's 84. Thank uh, you. And now let's move over to Nina. So, Nina, Nina, we will have a chance to speak a little bit more. Nina, let's hear how old you are, when you were born, and where you grew up. I was born in Pre at Presbyterian Hospital in Denver in 1929. And uh, I lived on a farm south of, pardon me, north of Denver, mm -hmm. west of Brighton. My dad was a farmer. And... Uh, we, we were very poor during those depression years, but we had a lot of love, and that's a lot richer than a lot of other things. All right. Well, thank you, Nina. Why don't we, why don't we talk about growing up? Nina got into it a little bit. Len, what was, what was it like growing up in the Depression? What, what do you remember? Well, of course, I was, a, I was born in 28. The Depression started in about 29, yeah. really. And, uh, of course, in... Uh, Basically, we had a, a large family, and uh, trying to get through the depression. My dad was a barber, and he uh, had, was pretty skillful as a barber. But for 25 cents a haircut, it took a little while to uh, uh, feed the family. But we were managed pretty well. We lived in Lyons uh, during this period of time, and uh, he uh, uh, gathered together some funds and. Bought a little house, brought it down the cabin, bought the house down, and, and we got along all right, pretty well. Everybody was very happy. Yeah. Never needed, never went without a, a nice, good, clear meal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Nina, you talked a little bit already about how times were tough, but you had a lot of love in your family. Mm -hmm. Could you share a little bit more about that? Well, I never, my dad being a farmer was very dusty and dirty when he would come in from the field and but he never did anything until he had his bath and then he would out come out and kiss my mother and when she always did a lot of baking and a lot of we had very good food and of course being on the farm we had lots of milk and whipping cream and uh, we lived well and it's amazing what you can do without money at least it was in those days maybe not today but so now let's talk about today and look back. Well, why don't, actually, first let's talk about today. How about just a minute about where you are today, what, uh, where, how you spend your time, and where you live. Len, why don't you start? Well, I live in Brighton, Brighton, of course, about 40 miles east of Lyons. And uh, uh, what else have I done? We just are retired. Uh -huh. And I've been a practicing lawyer for all these 46 years that I started out. Went to CU Law School and uh, then practiced law in Brighton for that length of time. Okay, Nina, now what, how do you spend your time in the present day? What, what keeps you busy? I have had to learn to enjoy life. I had five children, five girls and did all their sewing for them and cooking and that sort of thing. So now that I am alone, since my husband died, uh, I find myself reading at odd times of day and doing things that I never could do before and I'm enjoying it. Okay, so we've talked about <laughs> where you both started. We've talked briefly about where you are now. So much has changed between those two points of time. What have been the most significant changes that you have noticed in those 80 plus years? Oh, I think the economy really in the uh, early stages of my my life uh, 
you could get a bag of great big bag of potatoes for 10 cents and uh, now you know the economy has overcome all that it's very expensive to live and uh, I know my dad used to cut hair for 25 cents a, a haircut and now it's uh, you know it's several dollars so I mean the, the, the economy difference is major and uh, that's the main thing, I think. Uh, also, of course, we didn't. Uh, we had a small family early on, and our family then accumulated with seven children. So that made a pretty good-sized family to, to manage. And uh, but of course, I only had two kids, and uh, so it's a little easier to. To manage, I think now, and particularly if you're able to got to get a job and you have a like I was a professional, I can find work and make it pretty well. Now it seems like your generation really went from having few opportunities to really having immense opportunities with the war, post-war boom, GI Bill. Could you talk a little bit about what it was like to? Be growing up in a time when there was so much opportunity, when there was so much growth in America. Well, the post-war was a big event, of course. Uh, people suffered during the war and, and worked hard, and, and finally the abundant activity, abundant economic activity, took place after the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just when I started to go to college. At that point in time, that was a great opportunity for me. I happened to be the only uh, college-bound person in my family, so it was a great opportunity for me, and I, I tried to take advantage of it. And then shortly after that, during the Korean War, uh, I did became a veteran, so that added some degree of responsibility mm -hmm. that uh, uh, I enjoyed. All right, thank you, Len. Nina, what have been the most significant changes that you've seen in these 80 plus years? I think probably a being a child of the Depression era, that the amount of money that people have and the... We learned that anything you got was precious because you didn't get anything very often. And I see my, children, my grandchildren and great-grandchildren throwing things away that we would have loved to have had. They don't appreciate what we did. Mm. Yeah, so do you think people are different in these 80 plus years? Have people changed? Or is it just the economy and how we live? Well, I think the opportunities are more... Are, are mm -hmm. there, early on, there weren't that many opportunities. But later on, there are abundant opportunities for people all kinds of various jobs, particularly in the post-war area. Now, there's a l rather limited opportunity sometimes, but uh, that's the difference, I think. The, the greater opportunity in the post-war world and uh, the, the opportunities that you that were multiple and you could take your choices a little bit. Let's talk about technology. I mean, that's been one of the big changes. Now we have things like the Internet, we have cellular phones, we have highways that go everywhere. What was it like, Nina, what was it like for you in terms of technology and getting around and what you did for fun when you were growing up? Well, actually, we didn't do much for fun. There wasn't any money to go places. My parents never took a trip. Um, we scrimped and saved and what have you, but uh, I think the children of today don't appreciate what they have, like we or our generation does. Yeah, how about how about you, Dad? What well, the best technology? technology we had was the radio. Okay. In, in the day that I grew up, and when the, the going before the radio and hearing the golden voice of <laughs> Franklin Roosevelt, that was a great event. Yeah. And now you have multiple choices. You have all kinds of television and iPods and uh, email and all kinds of technology that just revolutionizes the whole concept of living. And, to, and people have, are now 
taking advantage of that too. It helps their work and it helps them enjoy life. They can watch a baseball game on television. And uh, when I grew up, I could just watch, I could just hear a baseball or a football game on a radio. And that's the big choice. I think the big difference is communication mm -hmm. and access to the information of the outside world. Do you think that is an improvement? Do you think this technology has all improved since you just had the radio? Is it a positive? Absolutely, yeah. it's a positive. Certainly, it's, it's a wonderful invention. <laughs> In fact, we've graduated from a radio into television and, and other uh, means of communication. And how's that transition been for you personally? Well, I get a lot of information from the e from the email, from the internet, and I have a PC, little computer. Are either of you on Facebook? No, I don't happen to be the kind that's going to look at Facebook or Twitter, frankly. <laughs> that 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 technology has passed me by, to be honest with you, Dave. <laughs> and how about you, Nina? What technological changes? are most significant to you? Well, I grew up without electricity. We had kerosene lamps and we had a wind charger for the radio and I appreciate everything I have now but I find that I don't think my children think they could do without this. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and that brings brings me to a point that's important for me. My sense is that both of you came of age in an age where resources were relatively limited in, in large part. And as I'm getting older, I'm seeing that resources are going to start getting limited again, particularly around uh, petroleum as we hit peak oil and the amount of demand for oil is greater than the supply. And we I think my children and myself are going to have to learn to do more with less. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the two of you, given where you've come from, might have something to teach people like me about how to do more with less, how to live when resources are limited. Nina, what, what kind of advice would you give someone that wants to live in a, more, a simpler way with less? I think it can be done, but I think it's going to be very hard because there are some things you seem to think you need that <laughs> you are going to find very difficult to not have, but it can be done and I think a simpler life in many cases teaches you to appreciate things more. Mm. Len? I suppose we could, we could limit ourselves with getting a lot of stuff, you know, in the household or personal stuff that you have, we, we might ought to be a little more careful about that and be more conservative. Uh, as you've indicated, maybe the future is not as bright as as maybe uh, some of that post-war area was. Uh, we're using a lot of resources and we're using those resources, we're using, we're using up those resources. And uh, how we have to modify our our way of living and maybe slow down a little bit but uh, that's something that uh, it's not going to bother me but I think the younger generation are going to have to learn a little bit and hopefully they'll be able to manage whatever event takes place. <laughs> well very good. Any, any last words you'd like to share? Again the question of change is coming, you have experience in these areas of limited resources, are there, are there any ideas or slogans or adages that you've lived by that have helped you live simply? Well, work hard and uh, be honest and forthright about your attitudes of life and find people that you can be in love with and uh, live a good wholesome life. I think that's what I would suggest. And I know that's a definition, it has a different definition for different people, but by and large I'd say live a good clean life and 
uh, and love your associates and be kind to the world. Nina. <laughs> I just have to agree with what he said because I think that's a very good attitude and I think that's what needs to be done. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome.